Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can test the amount of nutrients in your food with a really simple and cheap device called a Brix meter. Yeah, that's right. With this very simple $20 piece of equipment, you too can check out the nutrients in your food. And the other name for this is a refractometer. And basically what's happening is you're, we're going to put a couple drops of juice from either the fruit or from the leaves themselves and look through this little tube and the light will refract off of the device and then that gives us a reading inside of here. Um, so what we're gonna do is test all my different fruit. I've got grapes, berries, tomatoes, cucumbers. Uh, we'll try some lettuce, some basil, uh, whatever else I can find around here. And we will check it out underneath the scope. And I'm just gonna put the camera through here so you guys can see the reading as well. And I've got a whole printout chart of all the different levels so that we can see what um, how my fruit is doing and if it's at a high nutrient level or not what is the refractor meter measuring well it's measuring the dissolved solids in the sap or the liquid from the fruit and inside of that um, is the sucrose the plant hormones vitamins minerals all those things the higher the count the more sugar the more vitamins and minerals that are going to be in there and this is this device is used in the wine industry and the beer making industry and so when the grapes so what they'll do is they'll test their grapes every day and they'll find out uh, when the right time to harvest is based on the bricks test so this is a widely used device. Of course, there's more sophisticated ones. There's digital ones. There's also laboratory BRICS tests as well. So before we go collect our fruit, when should you harvest? So they say after about a couple hours of light for your leafy greens, they wanna get a little bit more uh, sun energy into them before you harvest and test them. And if you're gonna do a consistent test, then you should do it um, every day at the same time so that you can watch your recording over time and knowing where the BRICS test is, whether it's considered a poor or a really excellent uh, fruit or leaf, uh, it'll allow you to know how good your soil is. So you can adjust your soil based upon that. So it's, you know, this is a really valuable tool and it's a way that we can prove how good our food is in a very simple and cheap way. In the future, we're gonna actually have refractometer type technology in our phones, I believe. So the hope is that, um, in the next year or two, we're gonna have these consumer level devices that we can take to the grocery store or the farmer's market and we'll be able to test all of our food and see where it rates according to the refraction of light going through the liquid or the plant tissue and we'll know how much nutrition is in our food when we buy it. So it's pretty incredible and it would be a game changing thing to the industry. Uh, and I just really hope that we could base our food prices not on how cheap it is um, but the price would really reflect how much nutrients are actually in the food, not based upon the, the general statement of nutrition that is given to us by the FDA. All right, let's go check out some of the fruit. Let's go collect it all, and then we'll start testing it, and we can see how my fruit stacks up to the BRICS uh, sheet. And all this information, um, I'd really recommend the site Bio Nutrient uh, Association. I'm going to put a link down in the description for them so you can read more uh, complex information about the BRICS test and how it works and you can get a chart yourself so if you want to pick up one of these guys they're 20 bucks on Amazon I'll put a link to, to the one I'm using in the description for you um, it's just another way that we can record what we're doing over time and see the improvement to our soil and our food over time Some basil Blackberries. So those were flame grapes. These are my small concords. Got a couple kinds. Basket's looking really good. Uh, 
Okay, so here's the final amount that I ended up with. I uh, ended up throwing in an apple from the Anna tree, a uh, pretty ripe passion fruit, a beet. So we'll test out all these things. There's a lot of different things to test, and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. And then here's my sheet that I got from the Bionutrient Association. These are all different bricks readings for the different types of fruit and, and veggies. So these are established numbers. And of course, they're, these are all based upon lab tests done by professional meters. And then they're checking those tests against the actual plant tissue or you know a more intricate test. So these are very accurate. So for example, an apple, a pour would be six, 10 is average. 14 is good. So the higher the bricks, the more dissolved solids, which means more sucrose, the more vitamins and minerals and all that good stuff. All right, let's test out our first thing here. Okay, so just to show you guys how this thing works, if I just put straight water on there, that's not gonna have a reading, right? It should have a reading of zero. Okay, so we look at our reading there, that's at zero bricks because it's water, so it's not measuring anything. So we know that it's calibrated correctly. Okay, so now let's do our first piece of fruit. Let's see, what should we do first? A blackberry. So you only need a couple, like one or two drops of juice on there. And I'll put one more little drop. All right, two drops. Close the viewing window. And let's see what we got. So it's measured at where the blue and the white lines meet. That is the brick me bricks measurement. I've got two different charts here. Okay, so according to the chart, my blackberries are off the scale. How cool is that? So excellent is at 12, mine are 15. So the sugar, vitamin, mineral content is far exceeding what they consider to be an excellent blackberry. And the, no, those were super ripe as well. In between each test, I'm just gonna spray it off and wipe it, get it nice and clean and dry. And then we'll do the next one. Let's do the small Concord grape. Okay. So when I'm putting the juice in, I want to make sure that there's basically no air bubbles and the, the juice is covering the whole slide. Let's see what we got. All right, so for the grapes, I got 20. Awesome, this is so exciting. And yeah, keep in mind, my soil is now three years into development. I use um, only natural methods, no-till, make my own compost, vermicompost, I do aerated compost uh, and worm teas. I do Korean natural farming foliar sprays. I'm doing a lot of different natural techniques to get my plants this healthy to the point where they're now doing this. But it's pretty awesome to see that I'm getting these types of numbers. Um, if you want to learn how to do these different techniques that I mentioned, I have a lot of videos explaining how I make my nutrients, how I use my nutrients, and all that sort of thing, and a lot more videos coming out on that soon. All right, next let's try out one of our tomatoes. These are sun gold tomatoes. These are very sweet. I tested them earlier in the season and got 7.5. Let's get the seed out of there. So let's see what they're testing out now. Wow, awesome. So we got nine. So that's in between good and excellent. Pretty good, I'm happy with that. So it looks like they got a little bit better as the time went on. So now let's try one of the sun golds that was a little bit underripe. We just did this one, let's try this one and see the difference. Nice, that one's also at nine. Looks like the ripeness didn't have as much of an effect as I thought it would have. Okay, let's try the chocolate cherry now. Okay, that one's, this one's much lower at seven. So for that one, it's in between average and good. Disappointing, that's okay. So, and then let's, the final one here, we'll do the sweet 100s. I would say though, though when you eat them, the sun gold definitely tastes more sweet than the chocolate cherry, but the chocolate cherry has more flavor in my opinion. It has a little more nuanced flavor. This one's at, looks like eight and a half. Cool, okay, so now let's get into some other stuff here. And let's try out a cucumber. 
This will be a little more di more difficult to get a ju some juice out, but let's see here. Oof. I need like maybe one more drop. I think it'll be enough to cover the slide here. Okay, let's try that. So the cucumber is only about five. I'm pretty surprised because they taste amazing. So that's between poor and average for that. But if you taste it, I wouldn't, I would not rate it like that. I all the customers tell me it tastes amazing, but you know, that's, that is the sugar, sucrose and dissolved solids measurement. So interesting. So it'd be good to measure this over time. Okay, next let's try some apple. This is an Anna apple. This is a bit more of a, it's a tartar apple. It's real crunchy. It's a really nice apple. It's not the sweetest of all time. So some of these tests, I, I think feel like it depends on the variety that they tested as well and the, how they got these numbers. Maybe they're averaging the numbers from a bunch of different varieties. That I'm not sure on. So I'm sure we could take these results with a grain of salt, but for the most part, I think that they're pretty accurate. This is a, a long time tested uh, method. This apple's been sitting in my fridge for a little while, so hard to get juice out of it, I think. Okay. So the apples are sitting right at 14, which is good. Very nice, glad to see that. All right, we'll save our leafy greens for the end here. Let's do the beet next. Oh, I think that'll be enough. Oh my gosh, that's cool. So it's sitting at 11, but where it's white, it looks purple. That is the dying power of beets. So beets sitting at 11, so almost excellent. I love my beets, they are super sweet. Okay, so let's do a passion fruit. This is one of my favorite fruits of all time. And then we'll just kind of poke some of those seed pockets there. And that'll give us some good juice. So for the passion fruit, we got a reading of 12, which is a good. Okay, so the last few things I'm gonna show you guys are ones I'm gonna smash up to try to get the juice out. So we'll try to do some microgreens. See if we can get some juice. There we go, oh nice. That's at about four. I don't have microgreens on my list here. And that was a bunch of different varieties, so who knows, but I got a four. Lettuces, a poor would be four. Looking for kale or something like that, but yeah, endive is also four is poor. Huh, interesting. Interesting, I don't know. My microgreens are awesome, so I don't really know what to say about that, but. And plus microgreens are supposed to have an insane amount of nutrients, right? So I love the I love the cross reference this bricks with um, an actual plant tissue sample to really see. I have no idea, but that's kind of interesting, right, guys? Okay, so I just cleaned out that. I don't have a mortar and pestle, unfortunately, but that would work a lot better. But... Wow, it's kind of like a brown juice. Yeah, that's sitting at about four or five, like the lettuces. I hope that was really interesting for you. I know it was interesting for me to see how my different veggies and fruits stacked up uh, according to the BRICS charts. Um, really happy with most of the results. And as you can see, some of the results, it's like, you know, hmm, like how is it, like it tastes so good, but how is it rating so low on the scale? Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And if we really wanted to know what was in it, then we'd send it off to a lab to really find out. And like I said, hopefully they're able to make these digital spectrometer machines really accurate. Uh, and then we'll be able to test our food at any time, hopefully through our phone even. So if you'd like to pick one of these up, check out the description. Um, it's just, just 20 bucks and they're really awesome, easy. You can take it out to the field and use it. Uh, so what I hope to do is take measurements over time. I wish I would have taken some tests from you know three years ago when I had my first crops, and then I could have seen the improvement. And then you know it's just more evidence of the improvement of soil and how that affects the nutrients and flavor of food. So at my my new property someday, um, I'll be doing tons of different 
uh, evidence-based tests so that we can see the development of healthy living soil over time and, and the effect that it has on food, which we already know it has. Um, and other people have done these tests, but I want to really do it for my shelf and myself and show other people, uh, especially online, you know, what is possible when we do things 100% naturally.